After three full open heart surgeries and a couple through the femoral, these are the tools I keep at home to try to monitor my progress and my heart status. It's unrealistic to think that your doctor is going to catch every detail as it happens when you have appointments once a month or once every six months. You have to take the ownership on yourself to monitor your own health, monitor the data, and these are the tools I use at home to monitor that. Having just gone through another full open heart surgery about eight weeks ago, I'm still dealing with some complications, and I'll show you why these tools are so critical for me, especially at a time like right now. The first tool I'm going to talk about is one of the most basic, pulsometer, oxygen sensor, or whatever you want to call it. In the hospital, they've been replaced by just a tape-on device that connects to a monitor. You can buy these for about 20 bucks. It's very simple to use. Turn the power on, squeeze it, and just put it over the top of one of your index or your middle finger, and it will tell you what your oxygen levels are and what your heart rate is. The oxygen levels are really important to monitor either after surgery or as you're having heart problems because it's a measurement for how effective your heart is at getting oxygen to the body. So I'm at 97% right now. One of the things to note is that your levels may actually be higher when you're exercising or when you have just exercised. So think about the impact. If I'm just laying around on the couch it may only be at 95 because I'm not exerting myself, the body doesn't need to work as hard, but when I'm exercising, it may need to get more oxygen out there because there's a higher demand from the muscles. And that brings up another good point on timing. When you're taking this data, what I do is I use a spreadsheet in Excel and I track these measurements every day. But you wanna make sure that you're doing them under the same conditions. So I always do them in the morning, I get out of bed, I come out here, because I've walked, I know that I'm gonna have an elevated heart rate and possibly elevated blood pressure. So I'm going to sit down, do some things on the computer, watch TV for 15 minutes, let everything settle down to a calm state, and then document what my data points are. The second device we'll talk about is a Cardia 6L Mobile. It is actually equivalent to a six lead EKG. Now, years ago, this is something that we didn't have as an option for at home. But with my heart rhythm still all over the place, this has been very critical for me, not only to see how I'm doing for my own peace of mind and knowledge, but the way that this thing generates charts has proven useful in being able to email those to the doctors, let them look at it, and let them not diagnose, but basically let me know what our next step. Should I go in for a cardioversion? Should I give it a couple days? What's my actual rhythm? Um, what are the trigger points? What do we need to do? And it saves perhaps a doctor visit and it saves time in diagnosis and treatment. The way to use this thing is through your phone app. You would go to your phone app and log in. Once you're in the app, there's a couple ways you can use this. You can see there's three silver parts to the device. There's a battery inside that you may have to change out if you use it enough. Again, it, it Bluetooths to your phone, so you'll have to set up the connectivity with that when you start. It's not that hard, though. It's actually a really easy device to use. And then it recommends a couple different methods. One is on your knee, which is the one I've found to be most useful. The other way is down on your ankle. So you put a thumb on each of the silver parts there. You touch the silver part to the back. I'm going to hit record your EKG. I'm going to hold it real steady and still, and it's going to do a 30 second reading. All right, and it says, was this you? Yes. And today I'm in normal sinus rhythm, so that's great news. If you get an unclassified the first time, you might want to redo it, because if you break connectivity with your body or it moves around too much, you can get those unclassified, but it'll actually come back and tell you if you're in possible AFib or tachycardia, which is where I've been on and off for the last three weeks. So giving that information, again, it's not just a classification by the device, but it's actually a strip reading. It's extremely useful to be able to convey to your doctors and help them diagnose the issue. Once you have that, then you can actually email it to yourself and every time you do that, they're very tight on this device about, uh, about patient information. So you can't screenshot the strip. You have to email it to yourself, 
with the password that you set up. And that means that if you email this strip to the doctor, you're going to have to provide them with that password as well to open the file. And I think this was around 140 or 50 bucks. The next tool is very common. Most of us have seen this before. It's just a blood pressure cuff. There's a lot of different styles of this. This particular one of mine actually talks to a phone app and it documents it there. You don't necessarily need to have one of those. The biggest thing you got to know when you're putting this on is to make sure that you look for that arrow and there should be an arrow pointing right down the center line into the ditch of your arm. Shouldn't matter if you go right or left. So you put it on, make sure it's tight. Make sure that the arrow is pointing down the ditch of your arm and then sit very calmly, start the device. And I'm not gonna to connect to the phone this time because I don't need it. I'm just going to apply the pressure and then it'll trickle off. When it's finished, you'll see the display on the screen and it's gonna tell you your blood pressure as well as the pulse rate on this as well. So you're actually gonna end up getting your pulse rate from the pulseometer, from the cardia, and from this, and from the next tool that I'll describe in a minute as well. So you'll get these different items. The thing I try to look for is get the one that measures over time. So this is more instantaneous and fluctuates as you watch it. The cardia takes an average over the 30 seconds it's getting the strip. So usually I use this one, but this one should give you a number very similar as well. The next tool that's being used more and more for these kind of things is what I have is a polar watch. So there's the other brands as well. I like the Polar Watch. It connects really nicely to my Droid phone. I have an app on here that captures everything as well and it syncs. But from this one device, I wear it during sleep so I'm able to catch how my sleep is, how many hours I've had of it, uh, the quality of the sleep, the average heart rate during the sleep. I'm able to look at my activity, in other words, exercise. Obviously that means you have to track it. That way it captures the data and it'll capture my heart rate during that, which I also monitor just to make sure that I'm not going too high on the heart rate as my heart is still healing. Normally I keep it on the home screen, which tells me what my heart rate is. Again, I'm trying to keep my heart rate nice and low as the heart is healing from the surgery. So that's what's most important to me. From the app, I can actually look at, say, how my sleep was last night. It'll show me my heart rate. It'll show the heart rate variability. It'll show the breathing rate. And that all looks pretty good. For example, here, my heart rate was high because it was in tachycardia, but for four hours during the sleep cycle, it actually dropped to a good rate. And you can see my breathing rate also changed accordingly. And that brings up something important. My heart rate in the last few weeks and heart rhythm has gone back and forth from normal sinus mode around 60 to 70 beats a minute to tachycardia at around 120 beats per minute. Sometimes, this watch, when I get up and move around, will say things like 75, but I checked it with the pulsometer and it said 120. I've actually had it go the other way where this device has said 75 and this one said like 118. Let's say you're laying in bed, it's easy to look at the watch, but I tend to keep this by the bedside as well. All day yesterday, my heart had been in tachycardia with 120 beat per minute rate. Last night, laying in bed, I was like, hey, I feel better. I think it might be good. And I checked my watch and it said that the heart rate was back down in the 70 range. I grabbed this and checked it. And sure enough, this confirmed it was in the lower heart rate, which meant I was out of tachycardia, felt good all night. And then this morning when I got up, I got out the cardia to check it and confirm that yes, I'm back in normal sinus rhythm. Because my heart is in such a critical state right now with this rhythm bouncing all over the place, I track them in Excel and yes, I'm an engineer and I like to color code to see how long the episodes are lasting and document like what time. This device is a spirometer. If you've had heart surgery like me, you're going to be very familiar with these. What they want you to do in the hospital is practice this thing about every hour at least and just work on your breath capacity because your breath capacity isn't going to be as good starting out. Ideally, most of them will have a little ball here with a smiley face and they want you to maintain a slow flow and then you monitor how high you get up this thing. And when you start out, it's, it's pretty low. It can be a little bit discouraging, but you'll get there. It just takes time. 
And all you really do is let every breath out you can, and that's part of the trick, is let everything out that you can, and then inhale, try to keep the ball in the happy zone, and see where you get. This is unique compared to the other devices in that it's not just a data point to help you measure something, but the act of checking it is actually beneficial because you want to have your lungs, you know, cleared out. You want to have them uh, full capacity, full use. And so that will not only capture the data, but it also allows you to improve the situation as you go. The other things I'll just mention is pillbox, organize. You know, I've got an AM and a PM side to this one, so it's very useful. I keep a razor blade out here. No, I've never done Coke, but it's very handy for doing things like cutting pills in half and being able to lay those out. And I keep the <laughs> bottle cap with the last bottle of beer I drank several months ago as a reminder to not do stupid things and make sure I stay healthy. A couple other things that I use that are not as critical for health as these, but to me, they're still important. One of them is a common bathroom scale. Just monitoring your weight every day to me is important because if I start getting too heavy, I know part of that is because I'm laying around recovering, I'm not exercising as much, so I'm not burning as much calories. And as I start to get more of an appetite and I eat more, I have to be careful that I don't put on too much extra weight. I also just stopped taking Lasix a few weeks ago. Up to that point, they also wanted me to monitor my weight because the Lasix is what helps get rid of the extra fluids in your body. And if you start retaining fluids, that could impact your recovery. So they want to make sure I was monitoring that as well. The other thing that is a bit more cosmetic, but it is health related is body fat. I use a tape measure and I use a body fat calipers and I do measure those occasionally. Now, yes, you could say those are more about cosmetic and how you look, but for me, if I'm carrying extra fat, to me, that's not healthy. So I want to minimize that. There's a lot that's happened between an open heart surgery, appetite change, uh, different foods that I may be eating that I wasn't before, uh, different restrictions, you know, caffeine restriction, not being able to go to the gym and lift weights is a huge impact for me and also not being able to swim. And I'm having to adjust all this. So the more I'm aware of what's happening to my body, the better I can not only document it, but then once I get back more into normal and I'm going to the gym again and eating right, then it'll feel good to have seen that I'm able to get back to a healthy state and, and make these improvements and get back to the healthy point that I want to be. That's everything I've been using over the last couple of months to monitor my health. And I tend to use on a regular basis just to see where everything's at and to have these things in case one day you wake up and you're not feeling as good as you should. I just like to be aware of what's going on. So if you have some kind of tool or device that you found to help monitor your heart health, uh, please comment below. These are the ones I've found that work best for me. So let's all stay healthy together. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.